Egypt is home to some of the most amazing tombs in the ancient world. For centuries, these massive structures have stood as a testament to the power and wealth of the pharaohs. From the Great Pyramid of Giza to the Valley of the Kings, there are dozens of incredible tombs to explore. In this video, we'll take a look at some of the most amazing tombs of ancient Egypt. We'll learn about their construction, their contents, and their significance in Egyptian history. So grab your passport and your camera and let's go explore the amazing tombs of ancient Egypt. First, let's see an interesting fact. The organs of ancient Egyptians were removed when they were mummified. The liver, intestines, lungs, and stomach were put into canopic jars, which were specially designed containers. The heart was left within the corpse because Egyptians thought it would be weighed in the afterlife to determine whether or not you had lived a virtuous life. The architectural design of these tombs are one of its kind, so let's first discuss these. Every tomb featured two important architectural components that indicated its religious function, a burial chamber and a mortuary chapel adjacent. The burial chamber is located beneath the earth and contained and protected both the corpse and the soul. The mortuary chapel is above ground and available to guests who would perform ceremonies and provide food and drink offerings for the deceased. False doors were also installed in these chapels to connect the realms of the living and the dead. We will talk in detail about false doors in the video later on. The size, design, and intricacy of tombs, which comprised pyramids, mastabas, and rock-cut chambers, varied. However, changes were mostly owing to the owner's wealth and prestige, developing religious convictions, or political events. One of the tombs is known as Basic Pit Graves. It began as a modest pit in the earth, barely large enough to house the deceased's body and a few burial items. When the sand was reapplied to the body, the drying process triggered by the sand produced the first mummies, kicking off Egyptians' artificial mummification procedures. Although more elaborate tombs would arise later in the dynasty eras, this modest pit grave would continue to be utilized for lower-class burials. The pit graves evolved gradually through time, and towards the end of the pre-dynastic area, the pits had a lining of wood or stone, a roof, and tiny chambers. As satellite burials around the bigger tombs of rulers or monarchs, a great number of pit graves from the early dynasties are unearthed. Some pit graves found at Saqqara have small brick structures above the ground, pointing the way to later Mastaba tombs. The covering of the bricks over the pit grave changed slightly in the New Kingdom to that of an arch, a rough vaulted ceiling, or similar patterns. Moving on to another type of tomb, we have Nubian Pan Graveyards. Nubians discovered in Egypt during the early 18th dynasty were buried in a shallow pit in the desert. Nevertheless, these graves differ from the pre-dynastic pit graves and are hence referred to as Pan Graves. Now, let's talk about Mastaba's tomb. These tombs initially occurred during the pre-dynastic area, when they were utilized to safeguard the burial of kings. The form of the mastabas at this time were limited to oblong heaps of stone which would cover the grave. The mastabas would change slightly in the Old Kingdom to become heaps of stone covered with flat blocks. These blocks were still just a covering for the real tomb. The body was still buried in the ground. A narrow shaft would lead down to a small chamber in the rock. It was here that the body would have its final resting place. After the burial, the chamber was shut and the shaft was filled with debris. The mastaba became the focal point for friends and family of the deceased to bring offerings and chant magical spells. Now we will talk in detail about the false door. The crucial false door was part of the mastaba's design. This was where the family would come to present their sacrifices and recite the formulas. This false door was normally on the east side of the tomb, so the living would be facing the west into the land of the dead. The false door would be on the outer wall of the simpler Mastaba tombs. On more ornate tombs, the false door was housed in a small room inside the tomb. Also a second small chamber separated from the first by a wall, which occasionally had a small aperture. The false door was decorated with inscriptions and pictures connected to the deceased and his life, but mostly references to the deceased's funeral rituals. The next type of tomb we are going to talk about is rock-cut tomb chapels. By the end of the Old Kingdom in Upper Egypt, rock-cut tomb chapels had already been constructed. They gained popularity among Middle Egyptian kings during the first intermediate period in Middle Kingdom. They were also the most prevalent burial chapel form in the Theban area during the New Kingdom, 
and they were cut immediately into the mountains on the Nile's western bank. They used to have facades carved out of live rock. Typically, open courtyards flanked the burials chapel in Dynasty 18. In Dynasty 19, courtyards were frequently encircled by a portico, a tiny pyramid with a niche over the entrance to the mountain chapel housed a stella with an invocation to the sun deity inscribed on it. The hallway led to a large rectangular chamber. A passageway began in the center of the far wall of this space, producing a long room. The chapel's internal chambers formed an inverted T when combined. A stairway leading down to the actual burial chamber might be found in several locations within the chapel or in the courtyard outside the chapel's main entrance. Now, let's talk about the Giza pyramids, as these pyramids are the biggest tombs where great pharaohs are buried. The Giza pyramids, designed to last forever, have done exactly that. The massive tombs are remains of Egypt's Old Kingdom civilization dating back 4,500 years. Egypt's pharaohs intended to become gods after death. They built temples to the gods and gigantic pyramid tombs for themselves, loaded with everything a monarch would need to lead and support himself in the next world. Around 2550 BC, Pharaoh Khufu launched the first Giza pyramid project. His Great Pyramid is the tallest structure in Giza, rising 481 feet or 147 meters above the plateau. The Sphinx, a mystery limestone monument with the body of a lion and the head of a pharaoh, was also part of his necropolis. The Sphinx may serve as a guard for the whole burial complex of the pharaoh. The third Giza pyramid is significantly smaller than the previous two. It was built in 2490 BC by Pharaoh Menkora and featured a considerably more sophisticated funerary temple. Each gigantic pyramid is part of a larger complex that also includes a palace, temples, solar boat pits, and other features. The Valley of the Kings, or Wadi Biban al Maluk, also known as the Great Necropolis of Millions of Years of Pharaoh, or the Place of Truth, comprises 63 exquisite royal tombs from the New Kingdom era, all remarkably distinct from one another. Since the First Intermediate Period, the West Bank has been the location of royal burials. At least three 11th Dynasty monarchs had their tombs erected near Teref, northeast of the Valley of the Kings. The pharaohs of the 18th Dynasty, on the other hand, picked the solitary valley dominated by the pyramid-shaped high-top Alcorn, or the Horn. The remote position, surrounded by high cliffs, was simple to defend and looks to be the place of the setting sun, which ancient Egyptians connected with the afterlife. The tombs have been severely damaged by treasure seekers, floods, and more recently, mass tourism. The carbon dioxide, friction, and humidity caused by the average 2.8 grams of perspiration left by each visitor have impacted the reliefs and pigments of the wall murals. This brings us to the end of our video. Don't be afraid of giving suggestions on future videos in the comment section below.